So most AMD GPUs are now available for at or below MSRP, while a couple of models, specifically the 6800 and 6800 XT, are still generally fairly price inflated. Now, Nvidia prices have come down as well, but they're still hovering well above their MSRPs on average, especially compared to what AMD has done. Now this is video cards reporting on a new video from Hardware Unbox, but I'm not just gonna dwell on this, I wanna use this to lead into another story, which is, let's take a look at the low end, and it seems like Nvidia has kind of completely neglected a certain pricing bracket with this generation, and they might be about to correct that, which is very interesting. So if we take a look here, AMD's 6000 series, offers GPUs in the $200 range with the 6500 XT, and we can actually see it coming down occasionally even slightly below that MSRP. And we see the RX 6400, which you know has its limitations, but it also has its uses as a small form factor design. It's low, you can get them low profile. They can run just the PCIe power draw. So they're interesting for certain purposes. However, if we look at NVIDIA's current lineup with their MSRPs as well as their actual lowest available price, we see the RTX 3050 with its $250 MSRP occasionally available at that price directly from EVGA, I got one, but generally when it's sitting in stock at various retailers, it, it's around $300 or more which puts it completely in a different class of GPU than like the 6400 or even 6500 XT uh, in terms of you know what who might be interested in buying that. Now, what would be interesting is to see a GPU come in lower to compete here, but also with NVIDIA's encoder. Because the 6500 and 6400 not only just don't have the NVIDIA encoder. They don't have an encoder, right? Uh, so their use cases are limited. These aren't just for, right, for gaming. People sometimes will build a uh, low cost and small form factor PC where having the encoder for like media streaming in your house as a media server, there's various uses of that uh, that people might want that encoder for. Well, check this out. According to videocards.com, and this seems to be from their own sources, but they have said they have confirmed it with multiple sources, NVIDIA could be launching a GTX 1630, which at first sounds completely strange, right? 1630? The 16 series, first of all, we haven't seen a new addition to the 16 series in quite a while. <laughs> And then a 30 series GTX card would be pretty interesting because we haven't seen a 30 series model since the GT 1030. And notice the GT doesn't even have a GTX branding, right? So depending on the pricing, this could be extremely interesting, both for uh, cheap, um, hopefully cheap, <laughs> or else this isn't very interesting, uh, maybe like eSports GPU, but also, um, if it has that encoder, right, the NV encoder, this could be useful in a lot of these uh, situations where while AMD competes in price and low profile, they don't have that encoder, which would be extremely interesting. Now, what do we actually know about this? It doesn't look like we know very much, but video card seems to be, uh, again, saying that they have d double confirmed that this is indeed planned. Uh, but they said this information has only been available for a couple of days and we don't seem to have a ton about it. So what do we know? It says, according to their information, it's set to replace the GTX 1050 Ti. So it would likely cost less than 190 US dollars because um, that's also the current price of a GTX 1650. So if the current GTX 1650s are cost costing around 190, the 1630 should be less than that, <laughs> hopefully, but you know. GPU prices don't always make sense these days. And at the moment, the specs of the GTX 1630 are unknown. So basically, they don't really know anything, but they're speculating because, first of all, it's a 16 series card. It We could possibly expect a Turing model, like TU-117, and it would also make sense for this to be sub-75 watt power requirement 
because again, that would allow it to just draw off the PCIe slot. This would make sense. I would love to see low profile versions, but again, we don't see that listed here. I'm just speculating on what would be nice to see. Um, now, again, we don't, we, we don't really know much. So I don't, I don't wanna draw, draw, dwell too much on this other than it looks like this is a real thing. We don't know when it's coming out but it could be exciting. Now, speaking of GPU updates from AMD, we now have some updates to the memory systems uh, we're expecting from their next gen cards. Now, where is this information coming from? Because that's always important. Well, a while back, 3dcenter.org had reported on um, some, you know, I guess downgrades to previously rumored specs on some of the upcoming AMD GPUs. And that was a 3D Center tweet, but replying to information from uh, Kopite 7 kimi I think is actually how I should be pronouncing that. Anyway, well, Greymon, the, the Digimon with GPU info that has a track record of accurate leaks, is saying you should update to 128-bit, 256-bit, and 384-bit. Now, what is he talking about here? He's talking about the memory systems on these. So basically, this is a change to the uh, expected um, bit bus for these GPUs. Navi 31 was speculated or leaked, rumored to be 256-bit, but According to uh, our, our, our Digimon here, it's now going to be 384-bit. And the Navi 32, that's our next step down in performance uh, GPU class, would be 256-bit up from the rumored 192-bit. Although I believe the 128-bit um, on the um, Navi 33 is still what had been rumored. So, that would provide some boosts to the um, overall memory bandwidth, assuming, uh, and which we could get some speculation on, assuming it's 18 gigabit per second GDR6 memory, which would be a reasonable assumption. And that gives us these various uh, memory bandwidths here. Now, um, it's also rumored here, I guess, <laughs> that the flagship RDNA 3 GPU would be featuring one GCD and six MCD, memory compute dies, which is very different than the previous rumors we saw for the MCM design. So again, the rumors for the Navi 31 was that it, it would be a multi-chip module design, but it, yeah, if that really turns out to just be one graphics compute die and the chiplet based design is more coming from the memory compute dies. That, yeah, that, that's definitely not exactly what a lot of people were expecting here. Although I think that might be what would provide for some flexibility on these bandwidth uh, or, you know, the, these uh, bit bus uh, things to be changed kind of on the fly like this. I don't know, this is interesting. Uh, as we get closer to launch, I'm sure we'll start seeing more and more rumors on these things and, who knows what ends up being the truth. We take these leaks as always with much, 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 much uh, shakers of salt, many shakers of salt. I don't know, guys, I didn't get enough sleep last night. Can you tell? Uh, anyway, uh, last thing I just wanted to mention real quickly, a couple short stories is that um, Intel XESS, well, we d got that kind of delayed, at least from what we thought <laughs> when we thought we'd see it on the 20th. Uh, we have seen Tom's hardware testing FSR 2.0 on some integrated graphics chips uh, on some laptops. And while they couldn't get good performance in Deathloop, uh, they were able to boost performance with FSR 2.0 and 1.0, although 2.0 did look a lot better. And you could dive into that story a little bit yourself if you'd like. But the point is it did actually run on Intel chips which uh, <laughs> and boost performance. Um, and also a quick Vulkan update. It got some um, extensions to further improve ray tracing on AMD uh, GPUs. So that's only good news for future developments and, and performance on that. All right, guys, that's what I've got for you today. And I hope you have an excellent day.